Hey guys, this is Dr. Din again. So today we're going to be learning how to do the neck exam with ultrasound. So a lot of times when you examine the patient's neck, you can examine their thyroid area and palpate, but it's also nice to be able to see what you're actually feeling at the end of the day. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the, the linear probe, so you guys are used to this already, and I'm going to take a decent amount of gel and just put it on the probe. And the structures that we're going to identify on this exam, our one is going to be the thyroid. That's going to be really easy to see. The other thing is you can actually see the trachea as well as the cricoid cartilage, the thyroid cartilage. Okay, And then we're going to kind of recap what we saw before, the car carotid artery as well as the internal jugular vein. Okay, so let's, here's our model over here. We're going to focus on his neck. Okay, And once again, this indicator right here is going to be towards the patient's right side, indicator towards the right, okay? And I'm going to go right in the middle of this neck, where you think his thyroid would be. I'm going to place the probe there. And when you look on the ultrasound screen, you see right in the middle is the trachea, and flanking the trachea is the thyroid, okay? And the thyroid has a grayish appearance, and the trachea looks like a circle, because that's the shape of the trachea. And if you go lateral here, you're going to see that's the right part of the thyroid as well as the right carotid artery. And if you go even more lateral, you'll see the internal jugular vein and the carotid artery. Okay? And if I come back to center, once again I'll see the trachea as well as some neck muscles anterior to the trachea. And if I go the other direction, I'll see the left portion of the thyroid as well as the carotid artery, the left carotid artery, and the left internal jugular vein over there. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to midline here. So this is a transverse view or a short axis view. So if I wanted to get a long axis view, I'd come back and then I turn like it 90 degrees like you guys have learned to get a long axis, view, a long of axis view of this structure. structure. So, here you have so the trachea, here you have and, the trachea I'm and I'm just going to decrease the depth so you, depth see so you can see the structures I'm trying to point, structures out. I'm trying to so point out. The top most, so the top most structure, most structure is the cricoid, uh, the cricoid cri membrane. And as you come down you see the tracheal rings. Those hypoechoic structures are tracheal okay. rings, okay? And there is the cricoid membrane. And, and if I go even, if more, I go superior, even more superior, you can see, you can see a, little bit of the a little bit of the thyroid, thyroid cartilage, cartilage as well as the cricothyroid well membrane. membrane. Okay. okay? I'm going to come back down here. I'm going to come back down here. And that's the trachea. And that's the trachea. And if you can count and the rings right there, you can, you can, see the rings right one, there, you can see ring one, two, two three, three, four, four and five. And five. Alright. Alright. Hey guys, it's Dr. Din again. Today we're going to be learning about ocular ultrasound. So when you do a fundoscopic exam, sometimes it's really hard to see the fundus, the fundus of the, the eye. Um, with ultrasound, you're able to see the whole eye both the anterior chamber and the posterior chamber and the retina. So once again we're going to be using a linear probe, okay, the high frequency probe. And the main concept when you're doing ultrasound is you really want to use a lot of gel because you don't want to put any pressure on that eye. Okay? Um, and another thing is you're really going to have to anchor your hand somehow so you're not putting pressure on. So I like to use my pinky and put it on the patient's maxillary bone and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay? So let's focus on the patient over here. Okay? And if you can see the probe over here, I'm going to be using a lot of gel. So as you can see, I am just looping this up right here. Okay. So I don't want to put any pressure on his eye. The indicator is going to go up towards his head or towards his right. All right. And we're going to do two views. We're going to do one a sagittal view and another transverse view. Okay, so you want the patient also in a semi-recumbent position because if they're straight, if they're sitting straight up, the gel is actually going to fall down. So you want them kind of laying back at around 45 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to have a lot of gel, and I'm going to ask the patient to close their eye, and I'm going to put the gel right on top of the eye, like this. And as you can see, I'm not putting any pressure on the eye. Okay, and this is a sagittal view of the eye. 
So what you can see on the ultrasound image is you can see an anterior chamber, a posterior chamber, the lens, as well as the iris, and the retina. Okay. And what I'm doing here is I'm just fanning back and forth to make sure I see the whole portion of the eye. Okay. All right. So I'm just fanning back and forth. Right. And after I've seen that, I turn to a transverse view. I'm just turning that 90 degrees counterclockwise. Now the indicator is towards his right. And once again, I'm looking for the same structures. The anterior chamber. Let's see if I can get a better view. Sorry about that. Okay, so you see the anterior chamber, the lens, the retina, the iris, as well as the posterior chamber. And if you, tr if you really point your probe medially, okay, um, you can actually see the optic nerve, which is right there. It's a hypoechoic or dark structure at the base of the eye. All right. Another thing you can do is you can look for extraocular movements. So I'm going to have the patient look to the left. Now look to the right. Okay. One more time, look to the left. Now look to the right. All right. So that's, those are the basics of how to do an ocular exam, um, and it's a good adjunct to your fundoscopic exam. All right.